right, so let us welcome our guest, Mr. Marios Metuliaitis, a Lithuanian member of parliament. Good to have you back. I'm glad that you invited again. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, uh, Marius, tell us uh, very much the, I mean, we know it's significant, the Suvalki Gap, uh, the Suvalki Corridor, it is vital. Uh, but I'm just also curious of um, the, what it means also with this close cooperation, especially between Poland and Lithuania and this. Tell us a bit more about how that is a very important part of all this. Well, thank you for this question. It means a lot. It means the mo it means the most. It's uh, also the emotional attachment because in the history for centuries, being a Commonwealth of Lithuania, well, Polish Lithuanian uh, state uh, together, we were one of the most, the biggest actually uh, countries in Europe of that time a few centuries ago, and we fought against more, more or less the same enemy. It was uh, Moscovians, so Russians, uh, and, uh, and and it, we have the same enemy once again. Uh, enemy because the enemy is uh, aggressively um, showing his, uh, their intention to uh, provoke us, to test us, and maybe even attack us the way they attack Ukraine already. And therefore, uh, I have visited this uh, exercise of uh, Brave Griffin too this morning, and it was a, a proval that our relationship between Lithuania and Poland as allies in NATO, as also members of the European Union and as neighbors, is so great, so good. Um, and also, thanks to the presidents, uh, Andrzej Duda, and uh, Gitana Snowseda, uh, it seems that their personal relationship is very good and their sort of uh, ideology on many uh, matters. And it helps to also uh, coordinate uh, military aspects too. And um, the level that was shown in this uh, military exercise was uh, that I haven't seen any, anywhere before. It, it, they, they showed all kinds of like fighter jets, heavy military, um, uh, snipers and whatnot, and also tactics. So it's very important that you know the four countries were uh, participating at this: uh, Lithuania, Poland, Port Portugal, and the United States. And all of the all of the segments of this exercise was on uh, on a very high professional level. So I believe this is an, uh, a proof that uh, we we can do it. We can defend uh, a vulnerable uh, gap of mm -hmm. Suvalki. And this is very possible. Yeah, I just want to add on that there. It's significant because it's not just, as you said, it's important collective defense, collective exercise here. That's important. But also it's 1,500 Lithuanian, uh, I believe, infantry soldiers. So the bulk, I think, of this exercise was also really important that this is, you have skin in the game, you're involved. I think that's also really, really important to point out. That's right. And today um, President Duda said a potential aggressor must see our readiness. So how ready are we? And um, is, let's talk about Suvalki Gap. How, I mean, we, we talked about it briefly with uh, Maciej Mikos talked to us about that, but how, how vulnerable is this place for, for Lithuania, for Poland? And um, were these exercises, especially the, uh, there, to, to, we were especially training to actually save and to secure this, this gap? Well, I guess uh, the fact that the exercise is happening there, it shows that there's a need. Uh, so we have to accept the reality that there could be intentions of a hybrid attack, I would say, first of all, not necessarily conventional, but hybrid, and the military and NATO is preparing for those scenarios, scenarios too. Uh, are we ready? Uh, well, uh, we have some uh, some chains of uh, like purchase, trying to purchasing uh, purchasing some equipment that are lagging a bit because of the uh, well production. That's uh, because of the well not strong enough uh, defense industry in Europe, but also a lot of uh, requirements. Um, uh, well, from the United States, because they are trying to balance not only in this region, but also Middle East and uh, in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. So we have to compete a little. Yeah. And therefore, I, I praise uh, Poland to have 4% of defense budget and Lithuania, we are about to reach 3% very soon. And we are discussing to have 
4% of uh, defense budget from the GDP, which is which is great. And uh, the other uh, 30, 30 <laughs> we, we are ally of 32 countries. So if other 30 countries follow that, would it would be great. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, it's commendable and it shows you how real and committed Lithuania is, as you mentioned, almost 4% there. Poland, just the same, one of the largest. Um, also, I think globally, Poland itself, 14th biggest military spender in the world. Uh, but at that same time, I think it was during this meeting here between President Alceda and President Duda, I believe it was President Duda who said that 2% uh, of GDP for NATO countries spending that is insufficient in today's dynamic and complex times. Now, you cannot spend uh, for the rest of the alliance. I mean, it's commendable, but w what are you trying to do in your political circle or what is Lithuania doing potentially with Poland is there, let's say, hope that the other alliance members will finally come to that 2%? Because we're always hearing 2% isn't enough. And ma many, many players, large players like Italy, Canada, they're just not there yet with 2%. Yeah, so what we do, we try to use all the formats, uh, well, from the person like me working on a parliamentary, parliamentary diplomacy, uh, well, area, platform. We use all the platforms we can, um, NATO Parliamentary Assembly, COSAC, uh, um, Brussels formats, anything we can uh, to, uh, to encourage uh, this line, this uh, tendency to, uh, to, first of all, acknowledge the need to have bigger defense budgets and then also to acknowledge the reality that we are facing in Europe, the biggest uh, military war, I don't even like to say a conflict, it's a war in Ukraine, 500 kilometers from Vilnius, and it's the biggest one since the Second World War. So we have to, uh, if we want to defend our level of human rights, our level of democracy, our level of comfort, we have to sacrifice a little. So we go and speak with, you know, all the alliance, all the friends, and we have many. We speak with them in, in diplomatic terms. We try to explain, we try to prove the point that we we try to secure the external border of the European Union and also NATO eastern flank. And therefore, uh, we have to work in a so solidarity, in solidarity with all the NATO allies. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, Luxembourg, I believe, they spend 0 0.5, 0 0.6% of their GDP. And their um, argument is, uh, reasoning is that they don't have enough personnel to spend money on. But I believe it's only the question of imagination because we can use that money to work on cybersecurity, work on Cosmos programs, or even donate for other countries who has bigger armies, but not enough, uh, not enough funds or money to, to to equip, uh, for example, optics or lasers or even tanks, uh, fighter jets or whatnot. So we have to just understand this uh, need to be uh, in solidarity with each other. If I, if I may, just really, really quick. Also, you mentioned lasers. That's also, I think, a very powerful dual-use technology that actually Lithuania is really good at and thriving. Um, also, with that recent announcement, I believe it was just the last a week or so or even less, with a uh, large uh, Rheinmetall, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest European German defense contractors, potentially building an ammunition or building an ammunition plant uh, in Lithuania. So how, how is that connected? Do you sense also, is that part of your argument? Is that the business connection as well with defense? Because I think there's, there's a lot of uh, tie-ins there. Absolutely. The businesses would like to see long-term contracts and we are we have this agreement with Rheinmetall, so we also amend the laws that this factory could become a reality in eight or nine months. Usually, it would take two years. So, but the parliament has voted one time, and I, I believe I'm I'm pretty sure we would vote uh, two more times until it's uh, admitted. So uh, this law is 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 implemented. So all the legal terms will be finished as well. So Rain Metal is just one of the projects we we would like to see even more. Uh, but this is big. This is a big one. Actually, the biggest investment uh, when it comes to defense industry in in in, in our recent history. So uh, it's a great one. So we work in parallel, diplomatic things. Uh, 
economic things. Uh, everything is, 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 is connected when it comes to securing ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, Marius, yeah, thank you very much um, for joining us tonight. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. Yeah, but well, you have your handfuls. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.